What's up you guys? It's 2019, Pokemon Go has been out for nearly 3 years now and I wanted to start the year off right? Well, sort of right. My first video to start the year off was to address the trigger people in my last video but the point is I wanted to start off 2019 right by making a video for you guys, the new players. So if you're just starting in Pokemon Go or you're just starting to come back to Pokemon Go, this video is going to be for you. So we're going to go over all the basics of how to catch a Pokemon, where to find a Pokemon, how to battle a gym, how to raid a gym, how to trade in Pokemon Go, and how to battle another player. There's a lot of ground to cover, let's get you caught up. I'm going to try to keep this video under 20 minutes, so let's start the timer. Hmm. Let's start the timer. Guess I don't know how to make a timer yet. Alright, well, let's get going then. Alright, now we're here. So, the first thing you want to do for Pokemon, you want to just turn off AR mode. And the way you do that, you click on the top right hand side that says AR. Because in AR mode, it gets a little shaky and it's much harder to catch than when you turn it off. Don't worry too much about picking Charmander, Bulbasaur, or Squirtle. It's just a practice round. They have no meaning at all. So, now that you caught your first Pokemon, let's talk about how to properly catch a Pokemon. Alright, so the way I catch a Pokemon, this is going to be a little technical, so there's a few things you got to know. So first thing you want to do is click on your Pokemon, right? Now you're going to have options of balls when you level up, although you may be level 1 right now. Later on you get a great ball, which is a blue ball. The yellow ball is an ultra ball. Each one increases your chance or your probability of catching the Pokemon. And then you have berries. Berries are also used for making it easier to catch. So we have raspberry increases your chance. Banana is called Nana Berry. Sometimes the Pokemon can lunge at you and attack and it'll knock your ball away. So when you feed your Pokemon a Nana Berry, it pretty much stops it from moving and you can throw it as you want. You got the pineapple, which gives you double candy. We'll talk about that later. Then we got golden raspberry. You'll get that from raids at gyms. So a silver pineapple is basically a regular pineapple and a raspberry combined. And you get those through various ways in the game. When you click on a Pokemon, you can hold down the ball. And you see it's kind of like a light green. So there are different levels of difficulties in catching Pokemon. There is a green circle, means that it's very easy to catch. Yellow which is kind of medium, and red being the hardest level or difficulty to catch a Pokemon. So here's the proper way to catch. What you need to learn right away is the curveball throw because as you're starting off, it's going to make your game easier all around. Okay? So the curveball is, well, it is what it is. Spin the ball until you see little stars. So you look at the circle, there are three levels of throws. There's nice throw. When the circle shrinks smaller, it goes to great. And when the circle is tiny, it's an excellent throw. Each one of those will increase your probability of catching a Pokemon. All right there. And I didn't get it on the Pokemon, so it didn't give me a nice, great, or excellent throw. I still got it. If it pops out, you can use a raspberry. All right, next up, is how to find a Pokemon. So you notice down below, you see some pictures of Pokemon on the bottom right hand side. It's called Nearby. It basically tells you what Pokemon is near you. And the way how you locate it is you click on any Pokemon you want to find. Let's say um, this Trap Pinch. So, and then I click on the footsteps. It tells me this is the closest Pokestop around here. I'm not seeing it right here. It's probably on the other side. So let's go uh, try to find it. All right, so it popped up for us. It's uh, just on the other side of the Pokestop. Alright, well, it popped out from the circle, so when that happens, you can use any other different balls. Like, so if I use a great ball right now and hold it down, it turns yellow. If I use an ultra ball, it turns a little bit greenish yellow. Let's see what happens if I use a raspberry. So I use a raspberry, and now it's green. But what happens if I just use a regular pokeball? It goes to yellow again. So you can see that it increases probability. Oh, it popped out again. Let's try a nana berry, a banana berry. So as you can see now, it's not moving. Pretty much take my time and aim well nicely. And ah, almost got into a circle. It happens, with more practice, you'll get it down. Alrighty, I stayed in. So when you catch a Pokemon, you get three things, all right? You get on the right hand side, you see a little circle. That means candy. On the left hand side, it's called Stardust. And lastly, you get XP, experience points. You need those to level up in the game. Now it brings us to, I guess, the more technical aspect. What do you use Stardust and Candy for? If you click on any of your Pokemon right here, basically you see the little circle that is called Trap Pinch Candy because the Pokemon is called Trap Pinch. And then you see Stardust. And on top of the screen, you'll see CP. And CP means combat power. When you use your Stardust and your Candy to power it up, the CP will increase. The more XP you get, or experience points, will level up your character in the game. And the level of your trainer will dictate how strong your Pokemon can be. 
All right, now let's talk about Pokestop. A Pokestop is this blue marker that you see right here. It's pretty much where you get all your items from. So you'll notice that this Pokestop has a halo around it. It means that you haven't spun it yet, so it will give you additional XP points. Once you spin it, as you can see, I got an egg, Pokeballs, and berries. So let's talk about eggs right now because eggs are somewhat important in the game. There are four different types of eggs in the game. So when you get an egg, you can click on your Pokeball. The left hand side, you can click on Pokemon and then you swipe to the left side. We have three different types of incubators. The orange one on the left hand side is the infinite incubator. It means that you can use it infinite amount of times. To the right side is a normal incubator. We have a third one that's called a super incubator and it will decrease your distance. And the way how you hatch your eggs is by walking certain distance. So let's walk. Quick fun fact on hatching eggs. So it measures distance by time and it stops people from walking around in circles in the room or like just pacing back and forth. You actually have to go a certain distance for the game to see how far you've gone in eight minutes. So every eight minutes, it measures the distance. You cannot go faster than 6.5 miles per hour or 10.5 kilometers. Any faster than that, you won't get the distance for your eggs to hatch. Alright, so since we're talking about walking and distance, something that you also want to be focused on for distance-wise is your buddy. It's a way to walk your Pokemon to get more candies for your Pokemon. You can click on your avatar on the bottom left-hand side. You'll see three options. You have journal, style, and buddy. On the left-hand side, you can click on buddy. So if you need more candy for, let's say, a metal gross, like for me, I need more Beldum candy, so I have to walk it five kilometers but you can pretty much switch them out interchangeably anytime you want and one important aspect of walking for your eggs and for your buddy is the newest feature called adventure sync basically it's a new feature in the game where it tracks your distance without having the game open so the way to get your distance tracked click on your pokeball and then you'll see on the top right hand side you see settings and you make sure that Adventure Sync is turned on. Now, I bet you guys are wondering what is this yellow thing right here and what is this egg on top? Guess it'd be a good time to talk about it. Alrighty, so this yellow marker is called a gym. So when you hit level five, it's gonna give you an option to choose teams. By clicking on a gym, it will give you an option between yellow for instinct, blue for mystic, and red for valor. The best advice I can say is wait in your area you might find more mystics or you might find more valors or you might find more instincts play the game make some friends because you cannot change your team once you choose it and although it seems small it actually makes a lot of difference to your gameplay all right so once you pick your teams you're able to participate in raids and battles gyms are digital markers where teams can place up to six pokemon to defend the gym to obtain in-game currency once you defeated all the Pokemon in the gym, you have priority to add in any Pokemon you want. Once you add in your Pokemon, you'll notice a little heart on top. That's called motivation or health. And the higher the CP Pokemon, the quicker the, the health will decay over time. You can feed it berries anytime remotely. And by battling gyms holding territory, you will be able to build up your gym metal. By obtaining a gold badge for a gym, you'll be able to get more items when you spin the photo spear. So the egg on top is called a raid egg. Think of raids as Pokemon bosses. They come in five levels. One, two, three, four, and five. Level five eggs are the hardest because they're legendary Pokemon, which normally takes about three to five people, depending on your trainer level. The way how you enter a raid is by using a raid pass. There are three different raid passes in the game. There's a daily free raid pass by spending the photo disc for any gym, premium raid pass, which you can purchase in game, and there's an EX raid pass where you have to obtain it by completing a raid at an EX eligible gym. All right, so totally forgot to mention this earlier, but Every Pokemon that you catch has two types of stats. One is the base stat, another part is IV. IV is hidden stats in the game. It goes from 0% to 100%. Well, IV is pretty much the potential to be powered up. It's separate from its base stats. It does still have attack and defense and HP, but the amount of it is dependent on the IV. So 100%, for the sake of simplicity, I'll just read you guys the 100% appraisal. And the way I check IV, you want to Click on your Pokemon. You want to click on the bottom right hand side. Click on appraisal. For Mystic is, it's going to say Wonder first. It's going to highlight HP. And then it's going to highlight Attack. And then Defense. Lastly, it's going to say Exceeds in my calculations. That means it's 100%. So for Instinct, it will say it can really battle with the best of them. Then it will highlight HP, Attack. Defense, and at the end it will say, it stats all the best I've ever seen. For Valor, it's gonna say, simply amazes me, it can accomplish anything. It's gonna highlight HP, attack, and defense. Afterwards, it's gonna say, blown away by stats. 
wow so just to keep that simple if you guys have any more questions about ivs you guys can leave them below but just to give you guys a simple explanation of 100 iv what to look for when you're appraising your pokemon uh just this will help out a lot so if you notice on the right hand top right hand side of the screen you'll see a little weather symbol so they are in-game weather and they reset every hour so if the weather changes from like rainy to sunny it won't reset in the game until the top of the hour and weather system they affect the game in a number of ways by what type of pokemon spawns to how much the pokemon attacks so let's say if it's a sunny day like this you'll see more grass ground and fire type pokemon when you use them for fighting or gym battles you'll see like a little blue marker on the right hand side it's called an attack bonus so weather will increase attack for any of your pokemon that you use so just to uh, keep everything simple uh here's the weather so that you guys know you guys can pause it i'll wait Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. On the screen, you see these little Pokemon that has like these, you see like a little, um, I guess, swirly thing around it. Weather also gives you a catch bonus. And so let's see when you catch it. Well, here, I'll show you guys. Alrighty, so I caught a weather boosted Pokemon. See that little 25 sun right there? That's how you know. And what happened right here is that I got a seven day streak. Every day you play the game, if you catch a Pokemon or you spend a Pokestop, you get like a daily streak bonus and you just have to keep it up every day. It's not the end of the world if you forget a day, but you know, it's nice to get extra Stardust. And I'll show you guys a quick evolution because I forgot to mention this earlier, but when you have enough candy, you can evolve any Pokemon. So for this number, it requires 50 candy at the bottom right here. So. Since I have 1,535 candy for it, I can evolve it. Now there are certain type of Pokemon in the game that requires certain items to evolve. An Onyx to evolve to Steel, so you need a Metal Coat. To evolve a Porygon to Porygon 2, you're going to need an Upgrade. Seedra to evolve to a Kingdra, you're going to need a Dragon Scale. Lastly, you get a Sinnoh Stone. A Sinnoh Stone is to evolve any Pokemon from 1, 2, and 3 to a Gen 4 Pokemon. So the way how you get Sinnoh Stone is by battling PvP. All right, so now we're going to talk about... Oh, back home. Let's talk about field research. So, there are two types of field research. So, at the bottom right, you'll see binoculars. If you click on it, you'll see the first one appear, which is the field research. These are daily quest research that you can finish once a day to get a stamp. So, you get these quests from spending Pokestops. You get all kinds of things, from, from dust to different types of Pokemon to shinies. Um, to evolution items as well. If you don't like your quest, you can just press on the trash can and delete it. And then you can spend another Pokestop to get a new fill research. Each Pokestop has a set fill research for 24 hours and they switch around. And when you complete a fill research, you can click on claim reward and it will give you a stamp. After seven days, you get a breakthrough research box, which contains usually a legendary. So in the past, we got the legendary birds, Snorlax, and also the Legendary Beast. All right, so the next field of research that we have is called the Mythical Quest. Mew, Celebi, Spiritomb, and Meltan just got recently added. On the priority list of what is important in Pokemon Go at the very beginning when you're starting out, I would say don't focus too much on it because some of the quests are pretty difficult and the Celebi quest requires you to be level 25. Some of the other quests requires you to catch a certain type of Hoenn type Pokemon to a certain amount of raids. And for someone who's just starting out in the game, it may not be uh, possible yet to complete it. So I would say put off the mythical quest for now because you can finish it anytime you want. It's not that big of a deal. And once you're done, you're done. All right, so now let's talk about friendship, trading, and PVP. Hmm. I need a friend to trade and be friends with and I need to uh, have somebody to take down PVP. Uh, let's go find somebody. Alright, on my way to go meet my friends and I guess we should talk about the details of it. So, so friendship is pretty much the way how you trade in, in Pokemon Go. Basically, there's two ways to uh, become friends with somebody. Either one, give them your friendship code or two, scan the QR code. So to build up a friendship, you have to interact with each other once a day. The interaction consists of trading, battling, trading, open a gift, or they open your gift. Pretty much you know that you have interacted with that person already. And you'll see the avatar right here. you see like a little neon glow behind it. The benefits of being a friendship is one, make trading cheaper, because trading is pretty expensive. That's pretty much how they stop people from selling 100% IVs online and stuff like that, which is pretty smart, but it is pretty expensive. So the better friends you guys become, there's an attack bonus for friendship level. When you got raid or battle together, IVs will have a higher probability of going up. After seven days, you'll be great friends. After 30 days, you become ultra friends. And after 90 days total, you become best friends. And at ultra and best friend level, 
you can PvP without being next to each other. So that's a big plus. But right, I found some friends. So uh, say what's up, guys. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see a cool tattoo as well. Oh, that's right. We can probably get that on. Yeah, boy. All right, little gam for the YouTube channel. Oh, show some skin. Yeah. What's up, boy? Yeah. <laughs> it's a company. And they got, the, they got a tattoo on them. It's cool. All right, so there's Ryan and Kat. They are the admins of the Bayview group, and they're leaving today. So, you know, I thought I uh, would trade some Pokemon and battle them before they take off. You gotta give me a present before he leaves. It's true. I got that uh, Blast Burn Shiny Charizard. I agreed to give it to my boy Tong here. So, special Pokemon is like a legendary, a first Pokemon register, or a shiny Pokemon. And they normally cost a lot, but luckily I have mine already, so hopefully I'll be, it'll be a little bit cheaper. When someone requests to trade with you, you get a notification right here, and then you can click on trade. So apparently the one I have with Blast Burn was traded. Okay, well that's why. Okay, so it's gonna have to be Venus, I'm afraid. So just trade me whatever. Confirm. Confirm. Cool, I got it. I got Porygon Z. Above average, okay. Yeah, cool. It was tier 3, so I'm, I'm good with that. Alright, so now we're gonna PvP battle. You're gonna have to scan each other's code. If you're not ultra friends, you have to be in person to battle. Go to the nearby, and on the left side you see battle right here. I go battle. They can either read this code, or, or you can read their code. So I guess uh, I'll let her read my code. Like that. What a gentleman. And you have three different uh, battle leagues. The league right here. And then separated by CP, whoever challenges you can choose which league they want. It's your choice. We'll do, let's do Ultra. Basically you battle, you can battle as much as you want, anytime you want. And pretty much the main reason why people want to battle now is just to get uh, a Sino Stone. Uh, I have the upper advantage right now. Yay. Not for long. Sorry. Did you choose something that I could be fighting? <laughs> I see a difference right now. Oh, not very effective. I still did a lot of damage for not very effective. Mm. Uh. Okay, so now I have an option to use a shield. Uh, and I'm gonna use a shield because the Hound Dune destroyed me yesterday. <laughs> uh, Alright. So you pretty much have to press as fast as you can, otherwise your charge move is not gonna hit as much. And, well, I wasted my, uh, my attack. I got Carpal Tunnel now because I... <laughs> And uh, she, she blocked it, and now I gotta block mines too, because I don't want my Venusaur to die, because <laughs> I like my Venusaur. My Venusaur is a friendly plant. Uh, and, uh, is, it my, is it my former Venusaur, actually? Uh, actually, I was looking for it, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> so I just got my uh, my shiny one. Ooh, what's up, Tao, eh? Ooh. Hmm. Mm. I think I guess that. Okay. Oh, you still got no shield, really? What are you doing with that? Oh snap, I'm gonna get hit. I'm gonna get hit hard. Ooh, mm, mm, mm. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what I thought. Oh, we're gonna get off one of my hit. Yeah, I got one more. <laughs> I always believed. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, am I uh, gonna die? Okay, so I'm gonna try, uh, I'm gonna try this. Ooh, okay. I mean, I'm with the I'm gonna take that leaf blade. Okay, not very effective. I'll take that. Oh no, I only got psychic. I only got confusion on this. I was supposed to get dragon claw. No. <laughs> what? So? Oh my god, confusion sucks so bad. Did I did I take you down? I got one more. Still got my monster. Oh wow, right there. All right. Gotta give me a go away present. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, you're taking that, you're taking my Mewtwo down pretty fast. This might actually take me out. Ooh, ooh, snap, so close. Ooh, no. and I come in for the win. No. So the battle match. Come on, I'm late. I believe in you. Oh, oh, this winner is. That's so close. Right, <laughs> so I guess Sinnoh Stone. So you get some dust too. You got Sinnoh Stone? Yeah, Sinnoh Stone. Nice. Okay, well, that is a going away gift. All right, well, that's our PvP battle. And uh, let's go home and talk about everything that I probably forgot to talk about. Alright, back home now. Just to finish off this video, just want to say you can only invite your ultra friends and best friends to EX raids. Community days are monthly, featuring a community day Pokemon. Oh, and shiny Pokemon. People say it's probability, but seriously, it's really random in a game. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them down below. 
Thanks so much for watching my video guys. If this video helps you out, give me a like. And if you want to see more videos from me, subscribe to my channel for all things Pokemon Go related tips, tricks, and news. And I'll see you guys next time, alright? Peace out. And time. So they got a tattoo of my hot sauce, the last hot sauce, and why don't you just tell everybody why'd you guys get it? Because I didn't get your story last time because well because of the music. Oh that music, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Well basically just because we're moving um, we're moving out of town, we're moving upstate to Washington. We're out of state to Washington and just because we've had so much of a good impact from the Pokemon Go San Diego community that I figured it was a really good symbol for uh, all the friends we've made in San Diego and everything in the community at large. Nice. Uh, what I guess uh, what would be like your favorite time with Pokemon Go here in San Diego? Oh, I'm happy to answer that one. Um, probably one of the massive raids you brought me in. The first massive raid I was part of, you brought me in to help sort of organize the Valor end of it. And I had so much fun doing that. Easily one of the best experiences I've had here to date. That was uh, my 400 people raid with Mystic 7 and Train Tips. I'll leave the video in the link below so you guys can check out how big the raid was. So, you know, speaking of. But uh, how about you? What was your favorite time? Um, honestly, just like when... Because after Pokemon Go came out, I ended up going out to sea, so I stopped playing it for a while. And when I came back, we've been talking about it recently, when uh, Ryan managed to get me back into Pokemon Go and Articuno came out and we had like a raid train going around um, uh, like Chula Vista. And that was just really fun meeting up with a bunch of new people. You've been, a, so you, you play Pokemon Go for a lot of different places. Like how does San Diego like hold up compared to everybody else, every other location that you travel to? Oh gosh, well, I mean, I've been to Asia, which is Pokemon Go Central. <laughs> Everywhere I go, there's just tons of stops. They're always lured. But I would say with San Diego, with the massive amount of stops, is pretty on par to Asia. Maybe they're not lured like all the time, like Asia is, unless you go to like a park or a special event. But when I was in like the Philippines or South Korea or something, that almost every stop was just lured all the time. All right, nice, nice. Well, uh, hopefully you guys gonna come back here to San Diego soon. If not, I'll see you guys maybe in another country when you guys go to. Yeah. Hit us up. Feel free to come visit. Yeah, well, everyone's gonna miss you in San Diego. So, uh, yeah. I miss you guys. Tell my Bayview peeps. Y'all been real. <laughs> yeah. Peace.